Hey guys, I'm Viral and I am going to be doing this video about Bitcoin for United Financial Education. I'm not a, uh, a financial advisor. Um, I do have a finance degree from uh, Georgia State. Um, and I've been trading since, uh, I've been in the financial markets trading since 2012. What is Bitcoin? Um, so Bitcoin is um, magic money, right? No, I'm kidding. It is electronic cash, pretty much, okay? It's a new form of money. Cryptocurrencies in all of them are a new asset class. They are called digital assets, and um, there's thousands of them. Just like when uh, the internet.com you know, bubble happened or whatever, there were a thousand companies. Majority of them are gonna fail, and there's gonna be a few that make it to the end and really, really thrive. So like the Amazons, the Microsofts, the Apples, the, the Pricelines, the Googles, et cetera, um, are gonna thrive, and then the rest are gonna rot and pretty much go to zero. What is the point of cryptocurrencies? Well, you know, we're moving to a much more digital age. Um, everything's digital nowadays. You know, social, socializing has gone digital. Um, watching videos and uh, movies is, is gone digital. You know, we don't go to Blockbuster anymore to, you know, rent physical VHS tapes to watch something on our TV. We just go on the internet. Um, shopping's going digital. We use Amazon, um, Instacart, you know, website, like Walmart's website, et cetera, et cetera. We use all these things and we're going to a much more digital world and we're leaving the physical world behind. So um, I think that's really the big point of cryptocurrency is why do we need physical cash? Why do we need, um, you know, credit cards when we can literally just transact back and forth using one of these and, just have cryptocurrencies. And um, um, so that's the most basic um, uh, way I can really explain what's the point of cryptocurrency without getting into the political side of it. Um, but there, yeah, it goes much deeper than that. But let's just keep it simple for right now. I got into Bitcoin uh, when the first bull run happened back in, or not start, not the first bull run, but the most recent bull run from like the hundreds to 20, almost 20,000. And that's what really got me uh, digging and interested in Bitcoin and really trying to figure out what this was. And if in fact, was this a pump and dump scheme or a Ponzi scheme and just, you know, complete bullshit? Or if there's some, you know, backbone behind this, if there's some legitimacy behind this to really be something that could be very, very, very revolutionary, like the internet. You know, we get once in a generation style uh, or type investments, uh, opportunities, investment opportunities. So I wanted to know, is this my once in a generation investment opportunity? So I really started digging and really learning about Bitcoin and teaching myself, okay, how does this work? Uh, why is it important? Um, what's the technology behind it? I didn't know any of the like the terms or whatever. And I really wanted to learn and I really wanted to, you know, figure out and, you know, possibly put myself in that position if I had the opportunity to go back to 1999 or to 2000s and really, you know, have a mature mind and an imagination to really sit down do my research and really think about the possibilities that the internet offers and get into the minds of the next Jeff Bezos or the Bill Gates or the Tim, uh, not Tim Cook, I'm sorry, Steve Jobs or the Mark Zuckerbergs, you know, some of these wealthy, wealthy, but, you know, innovative um, CEOs, right? And I really wanted to know and really see, is this something more than just a fad? Is it more than just some, you know, bullcrap Ponzi scheme that everybody keeps saying that it is? And I, the first time I ever heard about Bitcoin, the way I was introduced to it, um, I really just shrugged it off. And I think the prices of the Bitcoins were maybe in the hundreds, if not maybe like double digits. Um, 
But the way I was introduced to it, it sounded like a Ponzi scheme, and I gave it zero attention at that time, okay? And trust me, I regret that to this day. Your safest bet right now, if you, if you really want to invest in um, the cryptocurrency space, is to buy some uh, Bitcoin because it's the very first one that ever came out and really what started this um, entire movement of uh, cryptocurrencies. So I've, I've I try, really tried to understand this question and try to figure out an answer for this. So pretty much it's the first, um, uh, first cryptocurrency. And the reason a lot of people, in my opinion, call it Gold 2.0 is because they're really focused on making Bitcoin the next global reserve asset, okay? So the U.S. dollar has been the global reserve asset for, you know, I, I think like 100 years now, maybe more. Um, actually, I think it's less than 100 years. I think it's like Bretton Woods, which was in like the 30s or something, after, after World War II, I think. So yeah, it's less than 100 years. You know, the U.S. dollar used to be backed um, and used to have its value derived from having um, gold in the reserves, right? So we got off the gold standard, um, and ever since then, um, you know, we've just been printing infinite amount of money. So this is where I think the name and, or the nickname per se, um, Bitcoin being the next, uh, being gold 2.0 comes in. Um, one thing I'll fully disclose to you guys before you invest or, you know, put any of your money into Bitcoin is just know that this is still a ongoing experiment pretty much. And it is uh, very uh, speculative. It is um, still very risky. It can still go to absolute zero. I don't think any of those things will happen. I think Bitcoin thrives in the next five to 10 years, um, maybe a little bit longer. So Bitcoin is a new form of money. It's, uh, it's digital cash, pretty much. It's decentralized. It's borderless, meaning I can send it to India if I wanted to in a matter of seconds. Um, somebody from India could send it to me in the U.S. in a matter of seconds. Um, I don't need anybody's permission to send that money because I own it. So I don't have to get my bank's permission. I don't have to get the IRS's permission. I don't have to get anybody's permission to send my Bitcoin to anybody else, uh, whether they live in right next door to me, whether they live right down the road from me, whether they live in the same city, the same county, the same state, the country, wherever. I can send that Bitcoin and, that, and the value that that Bitcoin holds um, in a matter of seconds without having a middle person in between. It is um, censorshipless, meaning that um, nobody can block your, uh, your transaction. So as soon as you send it, that transaction is recorded and verified on the Bitcoin blockchain. So nobody can stop you from doing it, right? And you don't need anybody's permission to do it. Uh, what is hard money? So our U.S. dollar is no longer hard money since we got off the gold standard. Pretty much meaning that it has a cap supply. There's only ever going to be 21 million bitcoins ever generated or mined per se. So yeah, there's 21 million coins and uh, there will never be any more and or any less. So that's why it's called hard money. These miners... Um, around the world are pretty much these computers that run the Bitcoin blockchain and verify and they add onto the ledger, onto the Bitcoin ledger. And uh, they run these crazy computations, et cetera, et cetera, run these algorithms. And whoever solves it first gets rewarded with X amount of Bitcoins. And every four years, that Bitcoin gets, uh, that reward gets halved, uh, which is one of the halvings that's coming up in like less than 30 days now to where I think um, it's going to go from 25 Bitcoins per every 10 minutes that enter into the supply chain down to 12 and a half, I believe. This happens every four years once we reach 21 million coins that have ever existed that will ever be mined.
um, it's over. That's it. There's not ever going to be any more Bitcoins. Absolutely. In my opinion, it's the most easy thing you can do. It is oversupplied as to how many companies there are that have set up exchanges and um, such an easy access. And what we call in the, in the cryptocurrency space, they're called on and off ramps pretty much. So it's a way to on-ramp people and off-ramp people. So the way to get your USD or your fiat currency into blockchain or into um, cryptocurrencies and then from cryptocurrencies back into fiat and vice versa. So you're on-ramp and off-ramp. Coinbase, I think, really um, is the easiest one, uh, or it was. Um, I think now Cash App offers it. You can buy uh, Bitcoin directly on a Cash App and store it on Cash App. And uh, let's see, you can, I, I'm pretty sure you can buy it on uh, Robinhood. I'm not sure. Somebody had mentioned that. Um, I'm not too sure. So what I use is um, I use Coinbase and I use Binance, um, which is a cryptocurrency exchange that started um, in China. And now it's pretty much one of the t one of, if not the top dog in the crypto um, uh, crypto exchange uh, platforms. So it's gotten much easier to buy and sell. Uh, me personally, um, I have a hard wallet and I use a different platform uh, called uh, Shapeshift to uh, use, you know, to control my coins. Um, I also have uh, some coins on an exchange, but that's only to really get in and out, in and out, in and out, and really um, to trade with. Um, I have some coins that are in, you know, stored safely, and then I have some on exchanges that I use just for trading purposes, and that's it. Um, you don't have to buy a whole Bitcoin, all right? Oh, that's a, that's a very common misconception as to, oh my God, it's too expensive. I can't afford $7,000 because for, or just for one Bitcoin. Um, I'll wait for it to go down to 1,000 again or whatever. Maybe it goes down to 1,000, um, but at that point, I don't know if I want to be buying because if it gets ever gets back down to 1,000, chances are higher, much higher that Bitcoin's about to fail, Okay. Um, but if you can, if you can spare and you're okay with about, at least right now, because Bitcoin's at $700, right? Or it's not $700, $7,000. If you can, if you're okay with losing, let's just say $800, go on Coinbase, go on Cash App, go on whatever platform you can, buy yourself 0.1, that's it. That's all you need, all right? In the long, in, in, in the long scheme of things, that's really all you need is 0.1 Bitcoins. Um, I'm much more greedy and I have more than that. But in reality, if you just want an insurance policy against um, the uh, the devaluing and the debasement of your dollar, um, it's going to cost you about $800, less than that right now because it's at 7000 But get yourself 0.1 Bitcoin. And owning 0.1 Bitcoin, mathematically speaking, would put you in like the top 10% in the, po in the population um, if it's successful and if it ever ends up being the global reserve asset of the world, you'd be in the top 10% of wealthy people. I mean, a $700 lottery ticket to be potentially in, um, you know, the top 10% of the wealthy people in the world, I'd take that any day. That's that's pretty much it. Um, if you guys have more questions in regards to this, uh, let me know. Um, or post your questions um, on the Facebook group page. And, you know, we'll, like I said, uh, me and Jalen will probably do a live Q&A um, if you guys have additional questions. Uh, but uh, not financial advice, but financial advice. Uh, get yourself 0.1 Bitcoins and, you know, sit tight. Thanks, guys.